interference by division of wave front by M K Srivastava, Department of Physics, University of Technology, Roorkee, Uttarakhand. In the last three lectures on interference, we have seen that the principle of superposition leads to an interference pattern when we consider light of the same frequency. However, a very important difference exists between monochromatic light source and the source of sound. The sound source emits a sinusoidal wave of infinite longitudinal extent. On the other hand, a monochromatic light source really consists of a very large number of independent atomic sources which emit for a finite period of time. The atoms also keep moving randomly and colliding with each other. The result is that the emission consists of wave trains of finite length and random initial phase. Two interfering sources must therefore be obtained from a single source so that this random variation of phase gets cancelled and the phase difference between the two sources so obtained is steady and does not depend on time. It depends only on the path difference between the two beams when they reach the screen where the pattern is observed. It leads to a steady and a stationary pattern. Such sources as you know are called coherent sources. You have seen that there are two basic procedures to obtain such a pair of sources. These are division of wavefront and division of amplitude. We have gone through various practical setups like Young's double hole arrangement, Lloyd's mirror, personal by prism, personal double mirror, parallel sided film, wedge shaped film, Newton's rings which is a very simple laboratory setup and Michelson's interferometer which is a precision measuring device. In the present and the next two lectures we shall go through various examples and problems and make comments to help fix up your ideas and illustrate the principles. Let us begin with division of wavefront in this lecture. Consider Young's double hole arrangement. It's S1 and S2 are the two sources which are illuminated by the basic source S. They form a coherent pair. The interference is observed on the screen. We shall consider really how the intensity varies as we move along the screen parallel to line of sources. The illumination at any point P depends on the path difference S2 P minus S1 P of the distances from the sources S1 and S2. For a fixed value of the path difference, the locus of the point P on the screen is a hyperbola. You see hyperbola is the locus of a point the difference of whose distances from two fixed points is fixed. Those two fixed points here are S1 and S2 and the fixed difference is the path difference. This gives you an idea of the shape of the fringes. Hyperbolic. For the small values of x compared to the distance d of the screen from the line of sources, the low psi are straight lines parallel to the x axis. Thus, we observe approximately a straight line fringes on the screen. Note that the fringes are straight lines even though the sources S1 and S2 are point sources. If we had instead slits instead of these point sources, we would have obtained again straight line fringes naturally with increased intensities. Now, these fringes are non-localized. They can be photographed by just placing a photographic film where we have got the screen. The dark and bright fringes are equally spaced. This is a basic characteristic 
of any interference pattern. And the distance between any two consecutive bright or consecutive dark fringes, that is the fringe width, is given by lambda capital D upon small d. Lambda is the wavelength of the light, capital D is the distance of the screen from the line of sources and small d is the distance between the pair of sources. We have assumed in this derivation that small d is very very small compared to the capital D which is usually always the case. If we are interested in the angular width then the angular width of the fringes measured from the midpoint of the slits is naturally given by lambda upon small d. At the nth bright fringe counted from the central one where the path difference is 0, the path difference for the nth bright fringe is n lambda. At a point distant y from the central point that is the central fringe 0 th order fringe, the path difference and the phase difference are y small d upon capital D and the phase difference 2 pi by lambda times y small d upon capital D. If a convex lens is placed immediately after the slits, the fringe width on the screen placed at the focal plane of the lens is given by lambda f upon d. d has been replaced by the focal length. Now, then the interesting thing, the energy distribution on the screen, this is given by i as a function of y, the distance of the point from the central point, central fringe is equal to 4 i naught cos square of pi lambda d upon lambda capital D. I 0 is the intensity of the individual sources which has been taken to be equal to each other. The, you see the density on the screen does varies from 0 at a minimum naturally where cos factor is 0 or the maximum value is 4 times i naught at a maximum. The average intensity is just equal to twice i naught which is simply the sum of intensities. The main idea here is just to show that there is no loss of energy. The interference simply leads to a redistribution of the energy on the screen. Let us consider another arrangement. The interference pattern produced by two point sources S1 and S2 on a plane P P prime which is perpendicular to the line joining S1 and S2. This depiction S1 and S2 this line line of sources is perpendicular to the screen. Capital D is the distance of the screen from one of the sources S2 and for the other source the distance is a small d plus capital D. We are interested on the pattern on the screen PP. In order to determine the shape of the interference pattern, let us find out the locus of the points P on the screen for a fixed path difference delta equal to S1 P minus S2 P. The x axis is taken to be perpendicular to the plane of the figure, y axis is along the line P P and the z axis is along the line, line of sources S1 S2 with the screen placed at the origin which is at z is equal to 0. The coordinates of the point P are x y 0, z is 0 and those of S1 and S2 are 0 x and y are both 0. So, 0 0 minus capital D minus a small d and for S2 0 0 and minus capital D respectively. Now, the, for the path difference we consider the distances capital D plus a small d square plus x square plus y square whole under root this is one of the distance minus capital D square plus x square plus y square whole under root this is the other distance and the difference of these two is equal to the 
path reference which is capital delta. Now we transfer one term to the right hand side and then I square this is the usual method of solving such equations. Okay, some of the terms cancel out the result is we get x square plus y square is equal to whole of this expression depending on a small d capital D and capital delta some constant value and this shows that the fringes will be circular that is the interesting part. The figure next we have that shows them for two different values of d. The first one when the d is 20 centimeters and the second figure where the rings are finer is when the distance is 10 centimeters. Now, in the plane of the figure if we put x is equal to 0 and consider the variation with respect to y for any given value of delta then the expression is given by y is equal to all this complicated expression. But the interesting thing is when capital D is very large compared to small d it becomes y equal to some value like a which is given d upon capital delta and the whole square root of the product d minus delta into d plus delta. If there is an mth order ring at the point p which means delta is equal to n m lambda which is the path difference then the y m for that is given by this expression d upon n lambda multiplied by the square root of b square minus m square lambda square. One thing is, is interesting here and that is as we move away from the point O which was the point in the line of sources on the screen the order of the fringes decreases highest order is at the point O and it is given by d by lambda. You see in the basic uh, Young's two hole arrangement at the central point the path difference was 0 and as we move away from the central point the path difference goes on increasing 1 lambda for the first bright fringe 2 lambda for the second bright fringe and like that. Here the highest order is at the central point the path difference here is not 0 it cannot be 0 and as we move away from it the path difference decreases the first bright fringe will be one order less next bright fringe two order less and like this. Now let us consider what should be the width of the sources and how does it affect the pattern. You see in all the arrangements like Lloyd's mirror or the Fresnel biprism or the Fresnel double mirror which depend on the division of wavefront the sources S1 and S2 they must be point sources or they should be thin slits that is very important this is the situation we like for a good interference pattern. If they are wide not the point sources not the thin slits the fringe system becomes blurred. In the case of Fresnel biprism and Fresnel double mirror the two virtual images are similarly placed we shall see what is the meaning of similarly placed and the result is that the various coherent pairs of point sources therein in the white sources they are displaced with respect to each other. So, this is the arrangement one has in the Fresnel biprism S is the basic source when the light passes through the biprism the usual refraction causes the creation of the two sources S1 virtual sources S1 and S2 but S1 and S2 are similarly placed with respect to S. This is the situation if S is white we have shown it say points 1 to 7. 1 to 7 does not mean anything just they are white sources and S1 and S2 have been shown. 
Now you see, corresponding to the point 1, the two virtual sources are 1 prime and 1 double prime. Similarly, corresponding to the point 2, the two virtual sources are 2 prime and 2 double prime. If the distance between the corresponding pairs is same, so the small d in the expression remains the same, but the midpoint of the two sources that is getting shifted. For 1 1 pair it is 1, for 2 2 pair again 2, 3 3 pair it is 3, so it is shifted. The fringe that is resulting from them are also similarly displaced, making the whole pattern less distinct. In the case of Lloyd's mirror, the original source and its virtual image are symmetric with respect to the line of the mirror. And the result is that individual coherent pairs here have varying distance between them. You see, that's the arrangement in the Lloyd's mirror. S1 is the basic source, the light directly reaches to the point A on the screen, then light reaching via reflection as if coming from the virtual source S2 and these two superpose and cause interference. Let's consider S1 and S2, they should be point sources or the slits parallel to the plane of the mirror. But if they are wide, as shown here, S1 is the basic source, S2 is the virtual image corresponding to the point 1 prime, you have the point 1 double prime corresponding to the point 2 prime, you have 2 double prime, 3 prime, 3 double prime. You see the midpoint of the pair is same for 1 1 pair or 2 2 pair or 3 3 pair, but the distance between the sources keeps changing. 1 1 pair are the nearest, then the 2 2 pair, then the 3 3 pair, then the 4 4 pair. So, here the distance between the sources is varying. The resulting fringes produced by them have varying fringe width. In the overall pattern, the central fringe and the first few fringes are ok and then the pattern becomes blurred. Ok, let us consider what happens if white light is used in place of a monochromatic light white light fringes. If white light is used, the wavelengths therein vary from about 4000 angstroms in the violet region to about 7000 for the red side. The central fringe now here in this case will be white because all the wavelengths will constructively interference here. You see the path difference for the central fringe is 0, so 0 for all wavelengths, no problem. As the fringe width depends on the wavelength, following the white central fringe, we will have colored fringes, but only few of them. The fringes will soon disappear because at points far away from the central fringe, there will be so many wavelengths in the white light which will constructively interfere that we will observe uniform white illumination. The white light fringes are sometimes though they are very useful as the central fringe can be identified being distinct from all other fringes. Only the central fringe is white, all other are colored. If the light is monochromatic, the whole patterns looks alike. You cannot identify if a particular fringe is the central fringe or not. Let us consider another interesting thing, a displacement of fringes. If a plate of thickness T and refractive index N is introduced in the path of light from one of the sources, it introduces an additional optical path given by n minus 1 times t. Yeah, it is shown here S1 and S2 are those two sources. This is small 
plate is introduced in the path of one of them. So, we consider the light reaching the point P from the source S1 and S2. A small d as before is the distance between the two sources. We want to see how the fringe pattern gets shifted, gets changed. The originally, the central fringe is at the point O and now it has got shifted to the point O prime. The result is that the fringes on the screen get shifted as we saw in the figure by an amount y which is given by n minus 1 times t capital D upon small d. Now, if monochromatic light is being used, this shift will not be observed as all the fringes look alike. So, whether you put the plate or you remove it, you would not find any change in the pattern, you would not be able to observe the shift. However, if white light is being used, only the central fringe zero order is white and is then different from other fringes which are colored. The shift of the central fringe can be observed and measured. This method can thus be used to measure thickness of thin transparent sheets. Okay, and the interesting thing is the contrast in the fringe pattern the visibility factor. So, that it is defined as the difference of the maximum to minus minimum intensity divided by their sum multiplied by 100 to express this as a percentage. Now, the maximum intensity is naturally the depends on the sum of the amplitudes which is required. So, if I 1 and I 2 are the intensities of the two sources, the square root of I 1 is proportional to the amplitude. So, the amplitude from one of the sources plus the amplitude from the other source, whole thing is squared is proportional to the maximum intensity. Similarly, for the minimum, when they are in opposite phase, the square root of I 1 is the amplitude of 1 square root of I 2 is the amplitude of the other whole thing is squared proportional to the intensity at a minimum where the two sources I mean their disturbance reaches in opposite phase. So, we have got this expression these two factors difference between them and the sum of these factors multiplied by 100. Now, naturally you can see here, if the two sources are of equal intensity, I 1 is equal to I 2, you will find that the difference factor will be 0 and then in that case the visibility will be 100 percent, the pattern will be very bright, crisp, sharp. This is the ideal situation, but if for example, let us take a situation where I 2 is only one tenth of I 1. Okay, now, again we have calculated the visibility factor 1 plus the square root of 0 0.1 whole squared that is for the maximum and 1 minus the square root of 0 0.1 whole squared that is for the minimum. So, I maximum minus I minimum divided by I maximum plus I minimum in this case multiplied by 100 makes it only 57 percent. So, the contrast has fallen quite a bit. Okay, I think this is all what we plan to do in this lecture. So, we come to the end of this. Thank you.